there, YouTube. Darlin here. Today we are going to be doing Magical Practice by the lovely Wayward Sun. I know it took me a little while to jump on this, and I do apologize, but I was very excited to do this tag. But I did want to give myself some time to actually do the exercises, the prompts that are here. I will leave all of the questions and exercises down below for anyone else who is interested and maybe hasn't jumped on the tag yet. I highly encourage you to do so if you are a music lover and if you also have a craft or a path that you are following. So the first question is, what is your favorite type of music, genre, or artist? Now this is a bit of a complicated question because I do so love many genres. Um, even ones that I might not listen to all the time, there are situations where I am so in the mood for those kind of songs, those kind of melodies and rhythms and vocals. Um, I was a band geek growing up. I was in marching band specifically because I really loved movement and music and just the whole package was very me. And... <laughs> I will link a picture of him down below, but I had a really awesome band director, so I was very fortunate in that. And hello, Pickles. Um, but yes, I was very fortunate that I had a music teacher who is as passionate about music as anyone I have ever met in my life. Um, so yes, I am very thankful for that. But getting back to the question itself... Um, when I was younger, I listened to music from 1966 to 1974 specifically. Um, there were some earlier and some later that I listened to, but generally now they would be called oldies. <laughs> I was not very um, involved with 90s music. I did listen to Spice Girls. I did listen to um, Vitamin C. But my favorite band from the 90s was Aqua. Uh, and I laugh about that because we do have an old Aqua CD and Barbie Girl. Do I really need to say more? Um, so yeah, my music takes, tastes have changed a lot as I've gotten older. Um, Simon and Garfunkel still has a very, very special place in my heart. As does Rod Stewart. Those were my teenage years. Um, when I went to college, I got involved in swing dancing. I, I wasn't very good at it, I will be quite honest, but it was a lot of fun. And I love old swing, new swing, electro swing, revitalized swing. Um, one of the first bands that I ever listened to when I went to college was Cake, which is funny because I believe they are an early 90s band, but I found them when I was in college. So I listened to a lot of Cake. I listened to a lot of Voodoo Daddy. I listened to a lot of the um, Cherry Poppin' Daddies. A lot of daddies. <laughs> um, I listened to all of that. I got very into Jason Mraz for a while. Michael Buble. And then when I left college... I had listened to her a little bit in college, but it was when I got out of college that I really fell in love with her music, and that would be Florence and the Machine. I also found Lana Del Rey very into her music, and although she is no longer with us, Amy Winehouse when I came back home. So yeah, I just love all kinds of music. I also really like, um, I almost said Voltaire, which he's wonderful as well, <laughs> but Volbeat I really like. Um, I grew up liking Buck Cherry because my dad liked Buck Cherry. I'm trying to think. The problem with um, rock bands or like modern bands, the problem I have is often I only ever hear like one or two songs and it's kind of like Cage the Elephant is notorious for this, um, where the titles of their songs don't really tie to what they're singing about. So yeah. Just a very long answer to that question, but I do love a little bit of everything. I even like some country every now and then. I like some rap every now and then. 
a lot of times when I'm not sure what I feel like, I will go into the international uh, options. Like, I really love listening to French music. I love listening to Spanish, uh, Romani music. I listen to a lot of that, a Romani jazz especially. I took a jazz class when I was still, like, trying to make college work for me. Um, probably one of the best classes that I took that I actually took something away from it in the end. So, yeah, I just love music. Music is wonderful. Music is part of what makes life worth living, as far as I'm concerned. Question two. Think of a loved one and a year. Listen to that era of music and clear your mind. What kinds of things do you learn from this experience? Now, again, this question was a little difficult for me because I did grow up listening to oldies and, and a lot of classic rock, um, which I didn't mention here because I don't listen to classic rock much anymore on my own because the local radio station plays a lot of classic rock. So that's what I have to listen to at work. And that's kind of what I associate it with nowadays. Um, but if I think of a time that I kind of want to go back to. Um, for this exercise, I listened to a lot of the music from the late 40s, early 50s, because my great-grandmother, not great-grandma Hazel, I didn't get to meet her, um, great-grandma Georgia listened to a lot of that music, and it's still the music that my grandma Smith, her daughter, still loves to this day. So for this exercise, I did try to listen to some of that music, but I think it's not that it's bad music. A lot of it was very good, and I wish I had written down all the songs I listened to, but it just, I couldn't connect with it because it didn't make me think of my great-grandma Georgia, because when I thought of my great-grandma Georgia, um, I remember her singing a song that was from the 60s, which I will link down below because I can't think of the title right now. I just know like one of the lines is, those were the days, my friends, <laughs> we thought they'd never end. We'd sing and dance together for a day. Um, I'll spare you for me singing any more of it. But that is more the song I associate with her because she would sing that a lot of times when um, when she thought she was by herself, when she didn't think that myself or my cousins were in the room. Um, and she also, a very strong memory, and it's coming back to me right now that I have, a very strong, poignant moment was um, my grandma Smith has always kept at least one or two cats. And generally for the female cats, she wouldn't get them spayed because um, she said it was too much money and it wasn't worth it, yada, yada, yada. I'm not validating her morals here, just explaining that um, there were a lot of kittens when I was growing up, <laughs> a lot of kittens. And I remember very distinctly Boots had had some kittens and as her name implies, she had like little feet. Um, she was a black cat with white feet. And all of her baby kittens um, also had this trait in this particular litter. And I remember myself and my cousin Kelsey always bringing these little kittens to her. And she loved cats. She adored kittens. And even though she was well into her 80s at that time, I remember her laugh. I remember her drinking tea and trying to hold like three or four kittens. And she's she was very, um, very much a Victorian lady in an age that was not Victorian. Um, so she was very frail and she always wore a dress and she always, um, she always looked very prim and proper, but I just remember her laughing and holding these kittens and just having a grand time and the light streaming in through the kitchen window. And I just, I even remember the smell of flowers and just, so that song, um, 
after I was like, well, this isn't working for me. When I listened to that particular song, um, it all came flooding back to me and I was able to revisit that memory. Um, I'm not going to talk about it here, but the other memory I have of her was actually like a composite memory. So it was like from different periods of time. But for me, it was all at once. Because I should explain that uh, great grandma Georgia passed away when I was four. So, um, so I have always found that really interesting that my memory kind of got bungled up a little bit there. Like there were all the pieces to a story. But as a four-year-old, it all felt like it happened instantaneously, um, which made for some confusing conversations when I got older. But it was nice to revisit that one particular moment and just cherish that one memory that I do have. So I think that's a beautiful uh, practice, especially if you are trying to do like ancestor worship. If you know what kind of music they liked listening to, listening to the songs that they did is really helpful. Number three, music with projection. Listen to a guided meditation music and visualize yourself in the scene. Share your experience. Now, this one, I kind of had my had to make my own meditation. I couldn't really follow somebody else's set for a guided meditation with music. I can do it when someone's talking, but I can't do it when it's just music. Um, I need more than instrumentals. I need vocals. Like, that is very important to me when I'm trying to meditate with music, trying to visualize with music. I need words. Even if necessarily I don't understand the language, I still need the words there. Um... So for this, what I did was I picked some songs of Florence and the Machine, and I will link them down below. And the one, one of the songs that comes strongest to me would have to be, <laughs> would have to be Seven Devils. Because Seven Devils was one of the first songs that kind of re-sparked my creative drive for writing. It was one of the songs that really got me pumped to start writing. I wrote over 10,000 words in less than a week while listening to that particular album. And that song in particular stuck out to me so strongly. So to regather that, I listened to it again for this exercise, along with other Florence and the Machine songs, which again, I'll include down below. And I just fully immersed myself in it. And when I hear Seven Devils, the first thing that always comes to mind are the seven shadow spirits in my apartment nowadays. Um, they always come to mind. And then... While listening to the song, like, I can picture faces being attributed to them. And each one of the faces is, like, a character of mine within a story that I have. And just, it's such a powerful song and such a religious song that I wish that I could attribute deity to it, but I don't. Um, but I did feel... A, like the whole story unfolding for me, you know, what happened to create the original conflict of the story and it follows through, builds to a climax and then slowly walks out. Like it is like listening and in your mind picturing a story from start to finish. That song just for some reason really speaks to me on that level. Um, there are other songs that I have heard that have done that before. Um, Simon and Garfunkel, again, are a group that I can just visualize an entire journey through one of their songs. America is great for that. So, number four, an exercise in a soundtrack experience. Listen to music from a favorite, sorry, I'm trying to read my writing and it's dark in here, from my favorite movie, show, or musical, or whatever, 
Visualize the movie in your mind or put yourself in place of the main actors. Share your experience. I am not a big movie watcher. I will fully admit to that. I don't watch a lot of movies and I don't watch a lot of TV. What I do, however, is play a lot of video games. So, to the point where our soundtrack for our wedding <laughs> was the soundtrack of Skyrim. <laughs> yes, of Skyrim. If you are familiar with video games at all, you probably know what that is. Unfortunately, we had meant to do Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim, but a friend of ours had set up the music and something got, the wires got crossed or whatever, and it only played the Skyrim soundtrack. And my poor dad just, <laughs> bless him, but he's just like, can we please listen to something else? I'm like, you could have said something and put in your own MP3 player. I was mostly just playing in the background for other people. Because while I love music, um, dancing isn't a huge thing that I do anymore. When I was, like I said, I learned swing dancing. But in the wedding atmosphere, we had less than 50 people there. And I didn't feel it was worth getting a DJ and blah, 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 blah. Um, but no, I play a lot of video games. So what I actually did for this exercise was I listened to the music from a video game called Abzu. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, but Abzu is a game that takes place in an underwater um, setting. It's all ocean. Some fresh water too, but mostly like ocean. And you see in this game, you play a little creature a little person, and you go through the water and stuff, but it shows you the actual, like, what a fish look like, um, it gives you their scientific name, it shows you the fish, you know, you can swim around with them, some of them you can hold on to, and, like, if you hold on to a dolphin, you can breach the water, it's a, it's a wonderful, beautiful game. If you think video games are all violence, I got news for you. No, they aren't. There are a lot that are beautiful, wonderful pieces of art and should be appreciated as such. And Abzu is one of those games. So when I listened to the soundtrack, I really did feel like I was in the ocean, that I was experiencing something that I have personally not been able to experience. I've never been to the ocean. But it was such a free experience and I would do that again in an instant that for me there were no vocals but that was closer to a meditation um than the previous uh prompt was because for me that I have played the game and I've beaten the game and I've gotten all the achievements and everything you can get all the collectibles because I loved that video game and that atmosphere so much so when I listened to the soundtrack, it was very freeing, very liberating, and just woke up my soul. <laughs> that was one of the most relaxing days I've had in a while. I won't go into detail here. I tried to make a bit video about it on Friday, and the file got corrupted. So I'm sorry. I was going to post more last week, but after that happened, I was just done. I was like, okay, apparently the universe doesn't want me to talk about this yet. But... With all the uncertainty I've been dealing with lately, that was a much needed exercise, so thank you. Tell me how you, number five, tell me how you use magic or music in your practice. Music, magic, I think they're all along the same wavelength. Um, as for how I use mu music, I'm going to get through it, guys. I'm going to get through this video. Um, as how I use music in my practice, um, although I don't really dance a whole lot, when I hear music, I do sense the rhythm, and I like to try and get into the rhythm. Usually I do that by singing along, um, but when it comes to festivals that I feel involve a lot of movement, such as... Um, the time of Beltane, um, May Day, Beltane, um, Midsummer, I feel involves a lot of dancing for me. 
<laughs> the one that I can't pronounce in August. A lot of times we'll play a lot of music while we're baking. Um, I can't pronounce it, but it's the first of August. And for Mavon, there's a lot of dancing for me. So those kind of holidays, which I feel really lend themselves to a lot of movement and a lot of energy and excitement. Oh, I will dance. I don't care that I look like a fool because that is for deity and spirit and my own spirit. That's just, you know, showing exuberance and joy. Um, if I'm not dancing, I will still come on to YouTube and I'll just type in the name of the holiday and I'll find a playlist and just let it run. Um, sometimes to manifest something, especially during new moon, when I'm, you know, setting up what I want to do in the coming month. A lot of times I'll play music to try and amplify the, the intention. I wanted to say spell, but that's not usually what I'm doing. Um, I'm trying to build up my own intention, inspire like myself to accomplish those goals that I'm setting. That's how I use music in my personal practice. So wonderful way to round out all those questions. I was very happy to participate in this. I don't know if I did everything, you know, to the letter of what Wayward Son intended, but, you know, music's a very personal experience, and I feel that I did experience very personal things while going through these prompts. So thank you very much, Wayward, for all of that. Um, I'm not going to promise a video tomorrow, but I'm going to try and put up a video tomorrow and Friday. We will see. Um, hopefully tomorrow I have some concrete answers on what's been going on in my personal life. Um, as I said last week, I, I needed to get some blood work done. Blood work was done. And now the results are in. But I have to wait to see a physician before I can get those results. So it's like, darn it. Why? <laughs> why so much waiting? But hopefully I will be able to make another video this week. I really want to get the intuitive tarot tag done. I know we will be going into June as of tomorrow, but that's okay. It's just fun to do them, even if we're a little late. Um, so thank you again to Wayward Sun for this lovely tag. Um, I'm not sure who hasn't done it yet, but if you haven't done this tag, I highly encourage you to do so. It is a wonderful experience and exercise. I highly recommend it. All right, without further ado, guys, I'm going to log off. Bye. Be good to each other.